Hi everyone, thanks for joining us at In The Know. We're catching up with some of your favorite celebs, reality TV stars, and more direct from their homes. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today we're joined by Iris Palmer, who has made a name for herself as a beauty expert and the owner of Star Lash. But you also may recognize her from the social media accounts of one Kylie Jenner, who has become one of Iris's best friends. During our chat, Iris and I talked about the difficulties of motherhood in quarantine, growing her business with the help of Instagram as well as famous fans, using her success as a first-generation American to empower others, and how she and Kylie formed a strong bond as friends, mothers, and businesswomen. Keep listening for my full interview with Iris. Hi, Iris Palmer. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. How are you doing during this quarantine? How are you holding up? I am definitely trying to adjust. I've definitely, you know, um, picked up a new job or two. I'm I'm a chef now. I'm a teacher. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm adjusting to my new roles, definitely. How have you been spending your time? So obviously you've been doing some schooling and a lot of cooking with with your daughter. Yeah, you know, I've been spending obviously most of my time um, at home. The only time I Mm -hmm. go out is to the grocery store. Um, But the first part of the quarantine, I, I've spent a lot of, I, I was organizing a lot and I was just very like in a confused state. I just didn't really know how to feel. I was obviously scared, you know, about my business, about life, um, our health, just everything. And then everything. I to think like, you know what, if this is going to be, we don't know how long this is going to be our new normal. So let me try to adjust, create a schedule. Um, so I, I, I did that and that really helped. I've creating a schedule like really um, made my day and my weeks just flow nicer. So I get up, I make breakfast with my baby, then I do two hours of schooling with her. So either I put on a program, we sit down, we do letters. Um, Then like if I have meetings scheduled or something, I go into my room, I lock the door and I let her watch a movie on her iPad. (laughs) Screen time. Thank God for iPads. Oh my God. The best thing ever like ipad <laughs> youtube i really appreciate all of that all that technology hey whatever honestly whatever it takes to be able to do it all like i don't know how you're like it, i commend you because i don't know how you're doing that and if that's what it takes then that's what it takes you know yeah. but i I've definitely say i'll definitely say that i feel like you know usually i would never have this amount of time at home or with my baby or just this amount of like time to this quality time that i feel like in a way i'm like you know what everything happens for a reason and you know, we need to utilize this time as much as we can to do the things that we normally wouldn't do. Yeah. And you talked about sort of, you know, when this first started, a worry is what happens with my business and Mm -hmm. and how does that affect what I have going on Mm -hmm. work-wise? You own Star Lash. And I'm curious, how has that, how has this time affected business and how have you had to adapt anything? Um, well, it's definitely affected my my business, my income, my um, my employees. I feel like I worry a lot about my employees because obviously as the owner, you're in a better position than your employees. Um, but, you know, you never, you know, they always say, and my parents always used to tell me like, you know, save, save for rainy days, save. But you don't, you, you think, yeah, yeah, okay. But you never really think that something like this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's it's been such a scare that I'm like, oh my God, once we reopen, I'm saving 80% of my, of everything, you know? Um, totally. It's definitely been a worry. Um, and then I also, I feel like it's taught me a lot, like the importance of like digital communication, because now that everything is shut down, like the only way that I am able to communicate with my customers, with my employees, with everything is through, you know, digital, through the internet. Um, so just trying to be creative and, you know, utilize the time that I have right now to restructure, um, think of creative ways. That way, when we're ready to open, it's like go time and I'm I'm ready. Totally. Um, So I'd like to step back a little bit because I I want people listening to be able to hear your story. Um, You know, you're a first generation American and you're a business owner and you're a mother and you have so much that's part of your story. And I'd love for you to just take us through kind of how you got to where you are in a Sparknotes version of that. (laughs) Well, I come from Salvadorian parents. Um, and, you know, from a, from a young age, I always, you know, saw my parents working. My dad never had a day off. Um, Sundays occasionally. And he always used to say, like, oh, if I could pick sun- like a day that I wouldn't work would be Sundays because it's like God's day. And so I've always been like a believer that like Sundays, like Sundays, my shop is closed. Like I just go, <laughs> I don't want no one to work. <laughs> but um, since I was 15, I had my first job and I always wanted, you know, what I didn't have. I didn't have 
we didn't have a house growing up, you know, it was like eight of us living in a two bedroom apartment. Um, so from a young age, I've always worked, I've always hustled, I've always, um, I've always been trying to figure out like what's going to be my thing. And then right. lashes was a side hustle for me. And I just, I saw I was in London. Um, I took a lash class. Everybody in London had these lashes and I couldn't think of one person in LA that had lashes or that did the service. So I thought, Oh my, I, I thought, I thought about it at first. Like I could do this as a side hustle. Cause I originally wanted to be an actress, but I wanted, I didn't want to be like a waitress at night and like audition right. the day. So I thought, okay, lashes would be a different thing. I could create my own schedule. It'll still give me the flexibility to pursue what I really want to pursue. And then that's that's how I thought about it. Um, but then when I when I looked more into it, there was just there was just like this window that I saw that I didn't know anybody that in LA that was the it lash person. And then I thought that could be me. Um, mm. So I did the class. I started the Instagram. I started everything anonymously because. Um, I was like scared, like if I suck, like I don't want people. I think we that we all sort of have that fear, though. It's like, okay, I have this idea. Are people going to judge me for like trying yeah, to pursue it? You so, know, literally, people thought I was working for the company, and I would pretend <laughs> to be different people. So I was like, I was my own secretary. Like people would be like, oh, she's not available right now. You know, my acting. Whatever it takes. In. Yeah, and then so I just I I built this whole company off of Instagram um, and Google. Thank God, you know, I I didn't have nobody really to help me because my parents again they didn't understand it at all they were like you need to stay in school you, you know we're just used to working for somebody else and mm -hmm. so entrepreneurship was on you um so i would sit on google and i'd be like okay how do i register a business how do i you know because then when i saw that window i was like this could really be my business um so that's basically what I did. I came back to LA and I was just hustling. I was doing anybody that would let me touch their eyes. I was doing, and then I was posting a lot of before and after before and after pictures. I was very consistent with my content on Instagram. This is when Instagram was kind of like new, um, but I was like, this is the only thing I can afford this free marketing, this free. Hello, platform. get on it while it's, or while it's early. Yeah. All I needed. And, you know, I always feel I'm a big believer that God puts people in your way, you know, to, um, get you to the next place. And he definitely did that for me. Um, and you know, my first celebrity client was Christina Milian and she just started liking my pictures on Instagram. And then I DM her and I said, I love to do your lashes. I noticed you, you know, you're liking my pictures. And she was like, let's set it up. Let's do it. I did her lashes. She posted me on Instagram. And then after that, it was just like a domino effect. And then I had all wow. these random people coming to my, I was doing everything from my dad's apartment. I had all these random people coming to my dad's apartment and I was just like not turning no one away. I was, I, I did that for, you know, a minute. And then I thought, oh my God, I can't have the whole random people coming like here. And then I started to get scared. I was like, hold on. I got to figure this out. I really got to figure this out. So for, you know, for two years I was grinding, um, saving a lot. And then I finally, you know, opened my own shop and I invested in another company because then I started, you know, for like first, like I'm the first person in my family to own a business, to have a house, like stuff like that. So I just thought, okay, like, of course I was excited that I was like making money and, you know, I was like, how can I be smarter with my money and like invest it into something else that I don't have to do the manual because with lashes, it was a lot of manual work because it was just me at first doing everything. Um, so I invested, for sure. I invested in another company called Sav Laser. It's a medical spa. Um, oh yeah. yeah I've heard of that one mm -hmm. in Calabasas. Um, and yeah, and mm -hmm. it's just, it, I've been hustling and grinding and building my business ever since. And then I had a baby. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so when you started star lash, when you were doing those people, those people's eyelashes out of your dad's apartment, were you, were you making the lashes? Were those your, was that your product that you were using or was it just your business? It was just my business. And I was, I was buying product from other people. And then, um, and then so many people wanted to learn how to do it. And so I thought, Oh my God, let me just, you know, teach what I'm, what I know. And so I, I looked into what were the qualifications of teaching and you just can't certify people. So I called my tech, my, my class, a technique uh, course. So where I just show you my technique. Got it. Um, and so I structured that and I just said, okay, so I used to give them a kit of other people's stuff. And then obviously as I grew, I said, oh my God, like, why am I giving other Why not do it all myself? Why? Right. Yeah, like, I know, I know what the best product is. Why can't I create a line? But you know, with all of that is obviously money, investment, time. It's like, and I just didn't know where to start with a lot of things. So I've just been like figuring it out as I go. And you know, everything is trial and error. And yeah, here That's I am. That's awesome. So now, now I have my own product line. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're there. And you know, I think 
Christina Milian, just you reaching out to her and her and the effect that somebody like her could just have on a small mm-hmm. business like yours was at the time, it speaks to the importance of having having tastemakers and influencers and celebrities get behind your products and and share the not their knowledge of something that's really good and and it, it, they put value into it. Talk to me about the importance of having. I mean, because since then there have been other people that have obviously endorsed Star Lash. It's mm-hmm. Selena and Kylie and and other people and. Talk to me about the importance of having that kind of support as well. I mean, I feel like, you know, luckily for me, they tried me and they stuck with me and I became their lash girl. And I feel like I just, I just built this like a loyal, like elite, like clientele that just gave me the credibility that I was, you know, the person that everybody wanted to go to. Um, so I definitely feel, you know, any, any celebrity putting their name behind you or, you know, supporting your products um, definitely makes people feel more confident in wanting to try you because especially like in Hollywood and, you know, everybody looks at these celebrities and everybody wants to use whatever they're using, whatever, like we all want their beauty secrets. So that's just what it is. And, um, you know, it, it could really change your business from night to day. Mm-hmm. And you also got, you said you got into Instagram early, which was probably really important because right at this point, Instagram is oversaturated and there's it's so many people doing things, yeah. mm-hmm. but you were probably one of the first people to do what you were doing and really use that platform to get to people and to create these amazing images around, around lashes. Do you think it was important that you got in so early? And do you think 100%. that you would be able to grow it now in the same way? 100%. I feel like now the problem is I, I always, I always say like, there's no such thing as an oversaturated market because I feel like, you know, there's so many people in the world. Um, and, uh, but I do feel that I had a big advantage getting in at the time that I did, because the problem now is like, I'm an established company, like people know my name, um, they want to come to my salon. Um, but the problem is now for the new people trying to come in and do lashes, it it becomes a who's doing it for less, and they feel like they have to come into the industry and they have to charge way less for people to even go to them. So it just it, it ruins the lash industry, you know, because it just becomes a who can do it for less type of thing. I definitely feel like that's a disadvantage now. For sure. So I was first introduced to you via I I recognize you from from some of Kylie's social media. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think a lot of people from the show and from just how open that her family is. Yeah, they recognize the people that they're friends with. And it's just fun to get to know more people. How did you guys first become friends? Doing her lashes. About six years ago, I started doing wow. her lashes and, um, you know, her whole, her whole family, they're just, they're very, very sweet. Um, and slowly but surely we started building a relationship and, you know, over every year it's just gotten stronger and stronger. And then we had, she had her daughter and, you know, I have my daughter and yeah, we have like a really beautiful friendship or our girls are friends. Yeah. I was going to say just what what feels really special about your friendship just from somebody who's seen it from the outside is that you have a lot of common you're both mothers you're both businesswomen mm-hmm. and do you guys exchange advice or or kind of commiserate together ever talk to me about how she's definitely somebody that i am very comfortable to pick up the phone and ask about anything or even like my products you know sending her um you know for her to see them test them um, and likewise, if she has something, you know, coming out, she'll give me a sample of her Kylie mask and she'll be like, what do you think of this? And, you know, it's, it's very refreshing and we are, a, we really support each other. Um, and I think that is important in any, you know, friendship and relationship and obviously, you know, her family and her, they're super successful. So I obviously learn a lot. She inspires me a lot. Um, she's a, she's a young, you know, billionaire hustler. And it's amazing. It really is very, very inspirational to watch and and to see you know how she never stops and she just keeps going so you know it's important to keep people like that around you because they just they just inspire you and drive you so much more totally and last thing about Kylie is that I'm I'm also just curious sort of how because she has such a devoted huge fan base and how have you sort of felt the support of her fan base as well now that you have let me tell you something her fan base is insane insane it's it's insane and they they really support her and her friends and I I definitely feel the love and um you know I'm grateful for it good I'm so glad um another thing that's really cool about Starlash in my opinion is that you as as far as I understand it you also place a lot of emphasis on hiring women hiring people of color and and using it as a way to pay it forward and to really help other people. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk to me about that as part of your mission as an entrepreneur. 
Um, I know. I think that like this whole woman empowerment thing, it's, it's really, um, it's like our time, I feel like, and I feel like, you know, we're our own community. And I feel like why not uplift each other. Um, And usually like the girls that I tend to hire, remind me of me. And 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 I always think like, if I can help that person, you know, in whatever aspect of her life that I can, then I'm doing something right, you know, and that's, that's my mission. And that's always like, what I aim to do is to at least inspire one person. I'm like, if I can inspire one person, then I feel like I've done my job, you know, um, in this world. Um, and yeah, it's especially, you know, for um, women of color, for Latin American girls that come from the same circumstances that I came from or the same background or family, um, that they probably think this is so unreachable or, you know, it's so hard to do that I feel like, you know, I, if I could do it, you could totally do it. Because, you know, that's how I used to think. I used to think, how am I ever going to get there? How can I figure it out? Like, and I, you know, it's it's frustrating sometimes when you can't go to your parents for the answers or for, you know, certain or for things. the money or something exactly. like that. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. But it's like you just turned to Google and that's where you got some of your answers. And that is truly, that truly shows you that, you know, if you really put your mind to it, if you just, if you want to find that answer, it's going to be out there. It just might be hard to find. Mm -hmm. It's consistency, it's hard work. And it's, it's literally that it's that you have to have that will in you that you would like want it. Like I always used to think like, I'm going to be successful. Like I'm going to figure it out. And I just would always had that mindset. And, you know, I, I knew I was going to figure it out. Like I knew, and I feel like there's different levels of success. And I feel like, you know, some people look at me and they feel like I'm successful and I've reached levels of success in my life, but I'm still nowhere near where the success that I envisioned for myself, you know? And that's just like, uh, that's like a self like goal that I have for myself that I feel yeah. like it keeps pushing me. And obviously my baby, you know, having a daughter really just motivates you and just, you're like, okay, I, I really got to figure it out. Like I, I got to get it done. So when you had your daughter, Ayla, you really kind of felt that extra drive to to create something 100%. even bigger. percent. Like she just put the, like I always had that 90% I and mean, she put that 10% into like, woo, all right. <laughs> I worked my entire pregnancy. I had the baby wow. later. I went straight back to work because I was like, no, like I, like I want to keep going. Have everything that I didn't have. Like I was always like, she has to live in a house. She has to have a background. She has to have a pool, like stuff that, you know, like I never had that. I'm like, I, I want her to have everything. And I think that's a lot of, that's a lot of what inspires me as well is like everything that I didn't have that my parents didn't have, you know, like all of that um, really pushes me to, to, to really get to where I want to get to. And also being able to help and give back to my community and to my parents' community is huge for me because a lot of people know, you know, like they don't really know like Salvadorians or they don't really know. Like when you think of like Latin America, people usually only think about like Mexico or, you know, like Mm -hmm. they're like, people don't really know about, um, you know, other Latin countries. So for me, it's really important to put my parents, background like into whatever and your heritage on the map for yeah. sure and and yeah that, that's really amazing and you you know you, you keep saying I want to get to where I want to go mm-hmm. where is where is that what else is on your list of things to accomplish or or to, 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 to grow your business the thing is with with my business with Starlash um I I have so many plans I I you know I I've definitely thought about franchising it um I want to see you know different star lashes all over you know, different parts of the world. Um, I just, right. I, I know what it takes uh, to run a shop and one person alone, you obviously can't do that, you know, but I also, um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I want to franchise it or if I want to keep it more like partner wise and, you know, like just like, that's like the next thing for me is figuring out like what, what route I want to go because I definitely want to see, you know, more of my product everywhere. Um, and I want to become more, more of a household, like, name for my product. So I want to see mm-hmm. one of my products in like Sephora or Ulta. Um, that is like, you know, one of my goals. Oh, yeah, that's the big ticket right there. Is that that is, getting, yeah, you know, that like, is, that's, that's key. One of my products somewhere, and then I, I will feel, you know, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> what's, so, what's sort of like the barrier? What's the barrier of that of getting into a store? Uh, in Sephora? Or Ulta? Well, I think, you know, for me, my product range right now is very professional and consumer. So I have both. So when you first start off with, with your product line, um, I, I do recommend and people start with one good product. Um, I I was aiming for the professional line, and that's like twenty five products. You know, so it's Got like it. a big risk, and it's it's you know it's, it's a lot. 
right? Yeah, but I am working on a one product that um, is consumer based um, that you would see in a store like Sephora in a store. Amazing. Like Sephora. So that is, yeah, my next. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I hope I hope that happens. Knock on wood. I hope we get. To, I mean, I feel like the sky's the limit right now for you. Your the trajectory is going up, and yeah, no, um, that's definitely the limit. I want to good be as well. Like I'm obsessed with my daughter. That I just I like. I don't know. I just see myself doing something with, like maybe kids' fashion or something. Like I love clothes. That's like my mm. love. Um. So yeah, we shall see. <laughs> love it. Well, Iris, it was really fun to catch up with you, and I hope you guys continue to remain safe and healthy. And um. We'll talk soon. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much. For more stories from In The Know, go to inthenow.com. You can also follow In The Know on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And find me, Gibson Johns, on Instagram and Twitter at Gibsonoma. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.